Hello and welcome to Infinity. Sometimes you grab a picture and you look at it later and going, yeah, this thing's wrong with it. It's not very well in focus and so on. But at the same time, you think there's something that's kind of interesting. And what I thought interesting here was this circle here of people and this guy here kind of just looking upwards at something here. And this one's just playing and this group here, which is, that's kind of interesting. So can we do something with that? We're in the developer persona here, which is why you've got these yellows and reds, because these up here show you where things are clipped. So let's leave those on, go down to shadows and highlights, and turn down the highlights until those disappear. Okay, so that's brought things back over here on the histogram. We've pulled the whole thing in, so it's all okay. The rest of the histogram looks pretty much okay. So let's just go with that. Everything else we'll do in the photo persona where you've got a lot more control. So now let's start on the composition. I'm going to go to the crop tool here and uh, it's actually in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a square format, which is kind of unusual. So click the gear wheel and go to the one to one there. But it, adds a little bit to the because I'm going to play with this here so I'm just going to keep his feet in there and bring this down here and across here so I've got all of the people in here there's some people things around the outside but don't worry about that because then I want to do some cloning just to get everything in again Actually, before that, let's just do a bit of dehazing. So we're going to go filter, haze removal. So that's kind of fixed that a little bit and maybe turn up the strength a little bit more. Here we go. That'll do. Apply that. Then I want to clone out these areas here. We don't need this particularly bright in the front, very distracting. Uh, and this has got some colour in it as well, which is also a bit of a distraction. So I'm going to put in an extra layer here and use this for cloning. I'm going to go to the clone brush here. I'm going to zoom in on this so I can see what I'm doing. And make sure I've got source here's current layer and below. And then I can alt click. And I usually do it on the edge like that. So there, yeah, and I don't worry too much about whether it's going to clone sort of patterns in. Because the first thing to do, oh, let's turn the opacity up. There we go. Is to just to get this mostly in the main distraction out of the way, and then we'll do a little bit of tidying up with it afterwards. So now what I've got here, I've got some echoed patterns here. So I can do some extra cloning here. And notice when I turn the opacity down, maybe about 50%. And then I'll click from somewhere over here and do a little bit of painting in here. In fact, what you can do is also often useful is to take the aligned off here. Because I'm not painting a pattern, I just want to kind of like a colour. And I just dab it. So I'm getting rid of that repetition there. And when I do this, I'm not creating more patterns. So this is just to get rid of this a bit. I can do the same from the other side. I'll click out there. OK, that will do that. I could spend a little bit more time on this going a little bit more. And tidy that up. But actually, that's going to disappear later, largely. So that's kind of good enough for now. We'll do something similar up here. So I'll start off with a higher opacity. And Alt click out here.
and just paint this away, careful around the edges. If you have a tablet you can do this probably more accurately, but I've just got a just an ordinary mouse. After doing this for a bit you kind of get used to it, he said. And just lots of little dabs on here. Oops, going a little bit too far there. Again, you can you can go in a bit closer if you like, but that's kind of got enough of it away, so that when I look at it now, that's pretty good. So what can I do now? Well. Something that's quite cute to do here is to do the tone mapping, but to do that we need to do on a single layer, so I need to combine these two. So I could just do a merge down, a right click and do a merge down, but I'd lose that. So I'm going to do a merge visible, so if I need to get back to it, it's still there. So this top layer here, let's actually call that something. So this is no, so call that uh, main pick, that'll do. Now I'm going to go to the tone mapping persona. And this gives me a bunch of things. See, it immediately brightens it up. It's quite nice sometimes just to use it to brighten things up. But I can play with this here a bit. The tone compression here, these two are the main things you've got. But you've got a bunch of other things as well. So here, this kind of brightens it up a bit here and the local contrast makes it grungy basically which can be interesting because because we are playing with it we can perhaps do more than we might normally do see what kind of effect we can get within here this is kind of making the colors a bit more saturated but something else you can do in here uh, you can do it in the photo persona as well but the trick is to turn the vibrance up um, which brings up the non-saturated colours. You've got a lot of saturation across it. And then turn the saturation down. And that puts everything down. And you get into this sort of like half-coloured zone here, which kind of like adds to that slightly grungy element of it. So that's kind of... How's, how's that? Do I need to do anything else? With this, by the way, in the tone persona, you can't double-click the sliders here to get them back to the original position. So if you're going to adjust it a little bit then you've got to be ready to do it. You can go over here and, and roll the mouse wheel and adjust it that way. That would kind of be a good way of doing it with precision. But that's okay. So let's bring the tone compression down a bit. Don't need it quite so dark. So light up there. That's just adds that somewhere in the middle there. Uh, local compression, that local contrast, fairly high. That's okay, so we'll apply that. So now then, Control Zero always puts it back into the middle. And what can we do now? Just just put a put a vignette on it. So a way to do that: right click on the blue there, put a rectangle. We're going to draw a rectangle. But I just start off here and just snap it down to there because I've got snappy on up here and I'll drag this up into that and make that fill go to black. Then I'm going to put a, an ellipse on so I right click there put on an ellipse and I'm just going to kind of just stick it in the middle for now and fill and make that white. And what I do then is if I shift click click and Click and shift click there to get those together. Control G to group it. And this is a vignette. We can't see it yet, but all we need to do is to change the blend mode here down to multiply. Or you can use the other ones here, but I usually leave it on multiply. You can see the effect we're getting here. We need to make this a bit blurred here. So I can just simply go to the ellipse on that and blur it. 
and what you can put on a Gaussian blur adjustment or go to the FX here. You've got Gaussian blur built in. Turn up the radius. In fact, you can type in here to get make something a bit higher. So let's say 400. It's more like it. So I can turn that off. And now I can just position it where I want this to be. So I go to the move tool. I can rotate it. I move it around the place. So I need to again include this guy, so that's important. I take it out to include those others then a little bit down here. And then go and reduce the opacity a bit, I think. We need to keep some dark around the edges, but this is kind of like kind of an interesting thing here. And what else can I do? Maybe add a little bit of colour to this. So just go back to the main pick and what I'm going to do, let's, we can do that perhaps with curves. So I go to adjustment and curves. If I want to I make this actually a bit yellower, I can just go to the blue curve there and pull this down a bit. See that it just makes that little bit of coloured, the yellow in there. So to pull out those sort of flesh tones a bit, but also we go to the red and pull that one up a bit. So it gets a little bit, you know, more like the skin looks more realistic. That's the thing to often focus on. So there we go. Let's leave it at that. That's kind of an interesting one, isn't it? It's literally gone from, let's go to the history and so drag that all the way back to here. And we turn that up and that turns into there. That's it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.